All right, for this week's Indie Game Showcase, we have something a little bit special. This will be a highlight of my favorite demos we checked out from the Latin American Game Showcase that occurred over the past weekend. These are the demos I had a chance to check out that we have not played yet on the channel. So with that said, let's take a look at some of my favorite picks from the showcase. We're starting things off with Super Crane Bug. Now we were playing this off of the itch.io page, but it is also available on Steam and that'll be linked down below. You're not hearing any sound because we're having this issue that the sound doesn't seem to be coming through right off of the browser. This is a match three kind of Tetris attack style game. Where our twist here is that while you are having to match three or more of each color in a row, how you interact or match the devices or match our little bubbles here changes based on whatever tool you're using. It may be a little hard to tell, but the sparkly orbs, when they are matched, they will change your kind of sorting or moving mechanism. So you'll go from being able to just move things around one at a time, to shuffling them, to even pulling them off of kind of the stack, and other options as you try to keep everything from reaching the top. And despite being generally horrible at Tetris style games, I was doing pretty well in this one if I do say so myself. Not the most complicated game you're going to find, but I did like what we're seeing here. A developer is, I believe, trying to get started or get funding for a Super Crane Bug 2. So if you're looking for a kind of slightly different take off of the Tetris formula, I would highly recommend at least giving this one a look. We now turn to Umi Dumi. This is a puzzle platformer where you play as the pair of Uni and Duni, who have to go and save their village from an evil force the only way they know how, and that is puzzle platforming. Our kind of puzzle mechanic here is that both characters have to be used to solve various mechanics and contraptions while trying to collect all those berries and getting to the end of the level. Now here's kind of the twist. This is a two-player puzzle platformer. You can also play it single player as I'm doing right now with the left analog stick controlling one character and the right analog stick controlling the other. And playing this as two people, this is probably a very delightful and charming game. Playing it as one person controlling two people and it is certainly a thumb-breaking challenge to say the least. I would highly recommend this game if you're either looking for a very challenging time or if you have a friend that you can play with either locally or with remote play for a very charming puzzle platforming experience. We now have Tiny Witch. This is in the kind of like overcooked kind of chaotic management genre. You play a witch who has been conscripted by a magical shop to feed and supply the various denizens that come in, lest you will be attacked by your own ingredients or your customers. The mechanics here are that you need to cook everything by hand, producing a various material which will then be combined into the goods that your customers want. You can spend in-game resources to get more burners and so on, and it looks like it's going to be a very chaotic time. My main problem was that the demo definitely had some issues to it. The controls did not feel right, there's no way to rebind keys, and it also unfortunately crashed as we were nearing the end of it. But this game certainly looks like it will be another charming niche, again, for people who like the chaotic cooking nature of an Overcooked or some of those other games. So if you're looking for some very quick magic spell casting, I would at least recommend checking out Tiny Witch or wait for the game to be released. Now up we have The Bunny Graveyard. This is an adventure horror game that follows in the very popular trend of something cute and adorable until it is not. You are exploring a game within the game as a helping hand here and you have to go on delightful adventures for a bunny rabbit as you complete jobs where nothing strange or evil could be going on. The game is going to be split up into various chapters detailing different points of the story. I do like the pixel style cutscenes in this one. 
from what we played of the demo, it's going to be a mix of kind of mini games with exploration or trying to solve what is going on in the world when you are finished with them. So this one, I definitely liked it. It's in one of those games I'm curious to see where it goes. The mini games can be a little annoying in some aspects, such as the rock, paper, scissors one or playing hide and seek. But I am generally curious about where they're going to go and when things actually start to go off the rails. So if you're looking for another horror game, one with both a cute and disturbing aesthetic, then I would at least recommend checking out the demo for the Bunny Graveyard, or check out the chapters when they are released later. Now up is Super Hiking League DX. Now this game actually came out a few years ago, but the demo was featured in the showcase. This is a competitive racing platformer game where you and a friend will race up different stages trying to see who can collect the gem at the top first. Besides being able to move and attack and jump, you can also send out kind of like a grappling hook to launch yourself higher up like a bungee style thing. Each one of the game's characters just comes with like a different look, they don't seem to have any real difference to them. The game can be played I believe only up to two players. I like the concept of this one, but I do have some issues I think with some of the limitations of it. There does not seem to be any kind of catch up or kind of get ahead of someone once they get further away from you. Once a character pulls out with enough of a lead, there seems to be literally no way for you to catch up unless that person makes a bunch of mistakes. And it does I think limit some of the appeal of this game because of it. I do like the concept here. Now, I think it could have been developed, or I would like to see it maybe with more elements in like a sequel or in a more refined version. If you have a friend and you both enjoy some platforming and looking for a game to compete with, I would recommend this game, but I don't know if there's enough here if you're just looking for a solo or just player versus the AI experience. With that said, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we have two more games for the showcase. If you're interested in my thoughts on design, then be sure to check out my game design books. For entry level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres, with more coming soon. Now up is God Machine Shogun Cyber Metal Arena. This is a kind of isometric action roguelike, where there's not much of a story right now. We are in an arena, things are trying to kill us, and we are going to have to survive by killing everything that stands in our way. You'll use a mix of melee and range attacks, as well as unlocking different passives after each fight. As the arenas go on, you'll go to new environments, fight different enemies, and so on and so forth. I do like the idea of the different upgrades and the variety of at least range and melee weapons that we saw. But at the moment, the demo I think is a little bit lacking. There's no real sense of, I guess, visceral feel or kinetic nature of the attacks. It feels very flowy to play. And definitely could use a little bit more in terms of reaction to like sound effects and music once you get past like these opening levels. But this is still an early demo and there's plenty of time to see more to God Machine. And I'm definitely curious to see, I guess, how much of a rogue like it will become as the game is released. For the last game of today's showcase, this is Hannah, a 3D kind of platformer slash horror game. We play as this girl Hannah here, trying to figure out what has happened to her life by being trapped in kind of a nightmare amalgamation of her past and the 80s. And to get out, we are going to, have to do all the kinds of puzzle solving and jumping one could imagine. I do like the aesthetic of this game, it reminds me a little bit of like Little Nightmares, but also kind of like the giant sense of disturbing scale of say a game like Bad Mojo. From the demo, you're going to be exploring these very massive environments, trying to solve puzzles, get around, and you can also find collectibles. The blinking lights that you see are kind of trying to be guide markers for you. Now, with that said, while the aesthetic is nice, it does have some major issues when it comes to the 3D platforming. The camera is clearly set up to be more cinematic than it is platforming, and it can be very hard sometimes to gauge jumps, as well as just figure out where you're trying to go. Hannah moves very slowly, and there's a lot of real estate to cover. 
And I couldn't quite figure out what I was supposed to do to end the demo. We got to this point where it just seemed like I wasn't sure where the game wanted me to go or what it wanted me to do. And it definitely could use some better kind of navigation or using the environment to kind of guide the player around. But it's another game where the concept is interesting and I really do like the aesthetic and art design of it. So if you are looking for another 3D platformer, and one that will take you back to the 80s, then I would recommend checking out Hanna when it comes out. But with that said, that's going to do it for the Latin American Games Showcase. You'll find links to all the games down below. As always, if you'd like me to cover your game for a future stream and video, please reach out. Do all the liking, subscribing, commenting, and so on. And be sure to visit our Discord and Patreon. Come back for daily sessions on game design here and on game wisdom where you're the art and science of games.